All right, who's the biggest X factor? Is it Tua Tunga Viola or is it his new head coach, Mike McDaniels? Peter, why don't you get this discussion going for us? All right, McDaniel's a first-year head coach. He's never coached uh, in any level as the head guy. He's always been under Shanahan for the most part, and we're not sure how he's going to be in front of the locker room. That's a real X factor. That matters. But it's Tua. Tua Tunga Vailoa is the biggest X factor, not only for the Miami Dolphins this year, but maybe the entire NFL. They have loaded up that team. Cameron Wolf just beautifully laid out the, the dynamic that they have with Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill and Preston Williams. They also added Taron Armstead, and they also <laughs> added Raheem Mo Rasheen Moster and a ton of different defensive talent through the draft. But I look at Tua, and it's not just this year. It's Tua, and it's a career X-factor, crossroads, you name them. Fact. Take a look at this draft class graphic that I want to do here. Tua is forever going to be linked with these two guys. Joe Burrow just took his team to a Super Bowl in his second season, coming off an ACL for, uh, in what was one of the most miraculous runs. Justin Herbert is not only widely viewed as one of the best young quarterbacks in the league, he's widely viewed as maybe the best young quarterback the league has seen in several seasons. And then smack dab in the middle is Tua. He is now trying to overcome an expectation that he's the missing piece in Miami that he is the weak link on a team that is loaded with a roster. And he's also trying to overcome what I would call a Mitch Trubisky experience in the NFL. Why Mitch Trubisky? Yeah. Trubisky was drafted before Ma Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, and it has followed him every single mistake he's ever made, every single pass that has been an incomplete, and every single time he tries to do anything in the league, it's can you believe they drafted that guy over Mahomes and Watson. Now you've got Tua in the same conversation as Burrow and Herbert. And I, I know there are Dolphins fans who are very supportive of Tua and they almost want to will it into existence. I'll tell you this. I go into this season and I wonder if Burrow and if Herbert were at quarterback for the Dolphins, if we'd be talking about them a little bit more as competitors to the Buffalo Bills in the AFC East. McDaniel's a, a wild card. We don't know. Tua is the X factor. If this guy delivers, not only will this team be relevant come January, but he's going to slay dragons and be able to say, yeah, I do belong. And Burrow and Herbert, they're good quarterbacks too, but I'm right there in there with the conversation. You're right, Peter. The reason we're talking about the Dolphins is they hired a new coach and paid a bunch for a new wide receiver. It's not anything they've accomplished. It's not because they made the playoffs and made a run last year. It's just stuff that they've done. And as much as I like McDaniel, and he's so cool and so refreshing, and he's got this quirky, aloof sense of humor, first four games, New England, Baltimore, Buffalo, Cincinnati, that's the first four games. You're 1-3 after that. You're 0-4 out of that. No one cares that your coach is funny and different. Win. And yet... I still think it's Tua. I, I, I really do. Can this guy play? I, just can he play? There, there's this palpable sense of unease around the league and certainly in the AFC East about, man, the Dolphins really loaded up, huh? They got some guys, don't they? Can he play? And you know, what's funny is that after Tyreek became a Dolphin, every single wise ass with a meme or some sort of uh, photo manipulation ability made their joke about why Tyreek to, to Tua. He can't throw it long. He can't throw it long. And it was a dumb joke. And then he gets out on the practice field, and this is one of the first things we saw. This was put out, and here's Tua, and we're going to go deep for Tyreek over the shoulder catch. And no, he stops and fair catches it. Now, listen. Maybe you give the Dolphins a pass. Maybe they're soft tossing a little bit, no pads. And maybe the next three that Tua threw to Tyreek were perfect in stride, 70 yard bombs. We don't know. But believe me, this blew up again. And people saying, told you so, told you so. That is not in a game. That is not their opener against New England. And maybe that's not how it's going to go. Or maybe it is. I would just ask this coach or quarterback, what's more important? A brilliant chef with crappy food? or someone who's never really cooked much and has an amazing piece of steak or fish or anything. I think it's the food. You could pull somebody off the street and say, here's some salt and here's a Bunsen burner and a nice piece of salmon and it would taste good. But if that food is garbage, I don't care if it's Emerald Lagasse meets Bobby Flay and the head coach that we got in Miami right now is Don Shula versus Tom Landry. It's not gonna work. I think it is Tua. Mike McDaniel might be the next best thing. If Tua can't play, uh, he ain't going to be there as long as McDaniel is. 
Uh, KB, you know, I'm glad you put that video up there because I was upset that people were just so critical of Tua. Talk about it. Video, guys. Let, let, let's talk about, you know, uh, at a National Football League practice, uh, when guys are wearing hats, yep. when uh, your receiver has on shorts, you can see guys drinking water in the background. That was a walk-through period. So it's very unfair to everybody on the Miami Dolphins team to use that video to judge their quarterback. That's number one. Um, number two, this team went nine and eight last year. Uh, amongst all the issues, all Brian Flores' lawsuit, amongst you know all the things that went on with this organization, they went nine and eight last year. Tua is thirteen and eight as a starter. So we got to give him credit somewhere. You, you got to say, okay, he is a capable quarterback in the National Football League. You, you got to start there because his record says he is 13, 13 and eight. All right. To me, the X factor is Coach McDaniel's. Right. It has to be Coach McDaniel's because it, it, it's on him to put Tua in this offense and in the right situations. It's on him to put Tua in this offense, um, you know, you know, in, in the right passing principles to utilize all the speed on the outside. When you have a guy like Tyreek Hill on the outside and you have a guy like Jalen Waddle on the outside, it's so much speed on an offense just just lining up a defense already takes two or three more steps back. Just lining up on first and 10, a defense is already going to give you an extra two or three yards because of that. And I would ask this, and this is a rhetorical question to everybody out here. I don't need any answer. I'm going to answer it. Does the stat sheet matter? Does the stat sheet care if an 80 or 83 yard touchdown is an 83 yard pass in the air touchdown or 83 yard no. RPO five-yard pass from Tua to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle, and those guys go 78 yards. There is no difference in the stat sheet. There is no difference. When you look at Tua as a quarterback, no. Can he just sit here and probably throw the ball 70 yards like we're accustomed to seeing? My guy Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, some of these big, strong-arm quarterbacks. That's, the, that's what visually jumps off the tape to people. No, Tua doesn't have that. He throws the ball a little bit different. His, his, his gifts are a little bit different. He's more in that Chad Pennington type of, of mode where the ball is catchable. It's about timing. It's about all those types of things. So I would say we need to kind of pump the brakes on our assessment of Tua just right now. He has the weapons on the outside. Those weapons on the outside are going to add space to this offense. The running backs are going to see a benefit. And Mike McDa Mike, uh, Coach Mike McDaniels, he has to call a game that utilizes all of those guys uh, on, on offense and utilizes the strength of his quarterback. So the X factor is Coach McDaniels. Yes, Tua should be the benefit from Coach McDaniels being a good X factor. Yeah, I go to what Mike McDaniel was able to do with Jimmy G and say what you will about him as a quarterback, but the fact that he was injured last year and they got within moments of being able to go to Super Bowl I think was a big deal, and you have to put a lot of that on Mike McDaniel. But I also think it's not just Mike McDaniel, but the coaching staff as a whole. I mean, you brought this up, I think, the last time I'd filled in on one of these shows, uh, and I thought it was a really great segment, Peter, so credit to you. You talked about all the instability that he had had amongst the coaches and specifically the OCs. Now he's got Frank Smith in there. You know, obviously the wide receivers have got Wes Welker. You've got Mike McDaniel, who's a bit of an offensive mastermind. And when you listen to some of these guys talk to Mike, it sounds like they have a lot of confidence in him. The confidence of the players are coming up. So, I think that there's a reason you tanked for Tua. Tua, I think, is a good quarterback, but you also need a great coach to bring out the greatness in some of these QBs. And I think from just all reports that I've been reading about Miami down there and listening to some of the stuff that Cam Wolf has been reporting, it sounds like he's building that within the building, and maybe that confidence is what's going to help Tua be an X factor. But I think the X factor in changing things is going to be Mike McDaniel. Kyle? It's incredibly well said, and I think it is still the most intriguing team in the entire AFC. Not the best, not the fastest, but the one that I want to watch more than any other come week one.